Hello, Alex from Barefaced here, and this is Sound for Musicians Part 4 Diffraction. So, again, we're looking at how waves behave. And diffraction is one that we have all experienced and one that we can do something about and think about in terms of how we position speakers or sound sources. So, diffraction is how essentially solid objects, so Yes, we all know that sound can move through solids, but it doesn't move as easily or in the same way. It travels with different velocity and, yes, there is an acoustic impedance issue if we're being fussy about what's going on. But say a sound or a speaker is here and there is a wall with a gap in it, like a doorway, anything like that. The sound, even if the sound is being sent in quite a controlled beam, so say it's from a high directivity horn speaker or something like that, it will reach this slot and it will actually not just go through the slot, but it will be diffracted outwards, like that. Diffraction relates to the wavelength of the sound, or wavelengths of the sound, because most sound is made of many, many wavelengths, and the size of the slot, the size of the obstruction, the corner or whatever that it's going round. It is quite incredible how effective diffraction is at getting sound places. This is why it's so hard to make things soundproof, because sound will go round corners, it will follow down tunnels, it will... you can go through a tiny narrow slit and then just get out to everywhere. And actually, I'll wave around something that we've got here that we made, invented. Um, if you play guitar and you haven't heard about these, you need to hear about them. So this is diffraction in action. You can see the back of this speaker. We have a slot here. And that slot is small with respect to the wavelength that's travelling through it, so it diffracts the sound through it and outwards and sideways. So it is kind of a, a fancy improved version of the slit in the wall that's causing diffraction. You can do this with light. Some of you may remember doing this in science lessons. If you have a narrow enough slit, so it's narrow relative to a light wave, the, the slit will actually cause the light to diffract sideways. It won't just go through the gap. So, you get diffraction through holes, slits, gaps, whatever. You get diffraction round corners, and this is quite interesting because the corner becomes an extra sound source. And you will see this on more expensive studio and, and hi-fi speakers where you've had to think about trying to make the most accurate sound possible, but you've also not had to consider the fact that someone might want to move this and put it in a flight case or chuck it down a flight of stairs, which is one of the limitations with gigging pro audio gear, touring gear. So the gear we make and the gear, uh, you know, PA speaker makers make, you can't really solve this and still end up with a robust product. But if you're going to have something in a studio, if you make a speaker and round off the edges of it, so, oh, there's a speaker up there. Yeah, I should point at this. This is one of our barefaced made speakers. So you'll get the sound that's coming off this speaker here. There will be diffraction on all these edges as the sound wave travels and then diffracts off there and diffraction off there. And they produce, they become additional sound sources. So your ear starts thinking it's hearing sound from multiple spots and it just, it just clouds the response somewhat. Also, you can put a large block, you know, a tower block and anything in front of a speaker and the sound will wrap around it. So diffraction is a very good way of illustrating how it's very hard to stop sound because of the fact it is a wave, it will do what waves do and it will travel round things, it will travel round corners, it will travel through things and you can't really confine it because it will follow the laws of physics, and if it wants to, if the laws of physics say the wave must expand, then it will. That's just the way it goes. On the whole, diffraction is super useful for us in practice, because it means you can set up in a generic room and everyone gets to hear everyone else well enough, because the sound diffracts, and it's not a problem in terms of deciphering what's happening, because our ears are used to hearing a sound that's been diffracted off numerous points. So, it works. So there we go. Sound for Musicians part... was that four? Anyway, diffraction. More to come. I'll be back. Um, if you joined this a certain way along, 
there's a playlist, so I recommend you go back to the start. If you're wondering why I'm standing here talking about this, it's because I run Barefaced and we design and build awesome loud speakers and we work on amplifier products and things like that. Here's some mix of bass and guitar ones over here. And um, they're better because we know what we're doing in terms of science and we actually apply it. Costs a bit more, but it's worth it. Anyway, thank you. See you next time.